Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, so now we're talking about game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. It's going to be starting up today at 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern uh, in Miami, Florida. And uh, what we're looking at is uh, who is going to be available and who's not. From what I understand, Kyle Lowry is listed as out. I'm not going to bring him back this soon. It's probably for the best. I do not think that having him out there at half mass is a good idea against a good defensive team like the Boston Celtics. Um, Max Struess is questionable. P.J. Tucker is questionable. Caleb Martin is questionable. This is not good for the Heat. This is not good for the Heat because you've had several days off to lick your wounds and get healthy. And on game day, these guys still ain't ready. <laughs> they still ain't ready. That is that is concerning to me uh, because the one of the things that I, I, I look at for uh, in this, this, this stage in, in, in playoffs is stability. Your rotations need to be tight. Uh, your, everybody needs to know everybody's role, and, and, and everybody needs to know every every play. Um, and when you have players that are coming in and out of the lineup, may be available, may not be, um, to this degree, the key players like P.J. Tucker and Max Struess, of whom you rely upon defensively, that tells me that you're limping into the season, the series, rather. You're coming into the series at a disadvantage based on some key components not being at a perfect uh, level so this this is this is not good and this is not good for Miami they have plenty of depth but they're already getting off to a bad start before the game even gets tipped so that's something I'm looking at I my gut tells me if those guys aren't completely and utterly hurt to start the game I think I think you'll see uh, PJ Tucker and, and, and Max Struess I do I think you'll see them but I don't know what their the injuries they're dealing with is and the fact that they're questionable I don't like it. I don't like it for my pick. <laughs> As you guys may know, I, I, I gave you guys uh, my picks last night in my preview of these two series that are coming up. And with this particular series, I got no real clear confidence in my pick. I picked the Miami Heat in seven, but it wasn't because the numbers or anything tells me that. What what I honestly see is just two teams that, if they were to play the series four times, would probably split it. Uh, I think this is going seven for sure. And, you know, I think uh, what could determine it is things that we haven't seen. Things, deter undetermined factors that have not been manifested just yet. Injuries, um, foul trouble, trends with people's play will ultimately determine how the coaches uh, strategize. And I think those strategies will ultimately be the winner for whatever team strategizes best. So I think that's the type of series we're dealing with. We're dealing with two very, very good coaches, two very uh, interchangeable uh, and, 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 and uh, what do you call it, uh, versatile teams. Um, so it's not really about who's healthy. It's not like, okay, we got our star out there, so you got to stop that star. That's not necessarily what this series is about. It's more so about stopping the systems and, and, and scoring on those defenses, uh, which is why I think these games are going to be ugly and murky. I don't expect high scoring. Uh, I don't expect either one of these teams to prioritize offense over defense. I do not expect that. I expect I, I expect these um, scores to be under 100 points in a lot of situations or at the 101 mark, that kind of thing. This is too much defense uh, and too, incons too much inconsistency with the Stars scoring on both sides. Uh, we just saw Jason Tatum have the game of his life, but I'm not a prisoner at the moment. I also saw him have a horrible game the game before that. What that tells me is inconsistency. We can get either one of those Jason Tatums tonight. <laughs> That's the reality of it, you know. I look for consistency. Are you giving me something that I can hang my hat on? Is there a trend here? Okay, that's what I'm going to hang my hat on. Not one single great performance, not one single bad performance. And if you give me both back-to-back, -back, I don't know what I'm looking at. And that's exactly what I see in Jason Tatum. Um, Jalen Brown, one of the things that worked for him in the last series was driving. Driving, 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 driving the basketball because he had a first step on anybody that they had in front of him. They just didn't have the foot speed to keep up with him. And it's not a problem to Miami to have at all. No, sir. Jimmy Butler's going to be able to keep him from doing that as easily. Um, you know, they got guys like Max Struess and P.J. Tucker. And you know what I mean? They have a, a team full of guys that are going to play that defensive position on him and keep him from being as effective driving the basketball, in my opinion. So he's going to have to... Hit his jump shot and attack from different angles, just like I always say with Jason Tatum. Attack from just different angles. That's the key for JT Money. Don't shoot just from one spot. You have the ability to hit from all over the court at all times. So make each and every one of those spots 
a space that the defense needs to be worried about. If JT Money can do that and spread out his shot selection throughout the entire court, give the whole court a, a, a look throughout this series, if he makes himself a threat from everywhere in this game, uh, the Boston Celtics are going to win this series. Simple as that. I think a lot is riding on the efficiency of Jason Tatum, and the trend that I've seen is him having shots straight away have been bad for him. Even though it's a comfortable spot for him, he hasn't been shooting a good percentage in that from that position. But he has been shooting well from the from the elbows and the corners, and and and, and you know his wing three point shot is his signature. He hits that shot a lot. But that straight away that line eye line drive shot that he likes to take uh, has not been efficient for him in his few previous series. And I do think that um, looking at his shot chart, he just needs to mix it up. So Marcus Smart is questionable as well. I should have already mentioned that. I think most people expected him to be questionable if you followed the last series because he's had a lot of physical, um, you know, punishment that's come his way. Um, and he's been excellent with it. You know, obviously, you remember him turning the ball over to Drew Holiday, making those excellent plays. I think it was like game four or something like that. But other than that, he's had a really good series, especially shooting the ball for his standards. Uh, he's been more efficient uh, over the last three or four games. And I think it's why the Boston Celtics were able to get up out of there um, scot-free out of that series because he shot so well if he would have bricked more shots i think the bucks would still be around so you got to give credit to marcus smart for just being great on both sides of the floor for his team this season um so you know obviously you, you're mentioning bam out of bio and jimmy butler when you're talking about the heat uh you want to talk about tyler hero as well those are the stars over there those are the guys that you're going to look at to do most of the heavy lifting for the miami heat uh from a, on a consistent basis uh, they do rely upon the other guys like Oladipo. Um, you know, maybe they play uh, Duncan Robinson. Maybe they don't. But in a game like tonight, you probably lean on those guys a little more given the fact that those other guys are banged up. Um, so, yeah, Gabe, Vincent, people like that are going to have minutes in the series. Got to play well. Dwayne Dedman, I'm looking at him. He's going to be extremely important and key uh, depending on how the shooting is going. Both of these teams have their struggles scoring the ball, as we've said. Both of them have struggles bricking they're both brick artists they're a fantastic defensive teams so they're going to make up for it but you're going to see a lot of missed shots in the series i think the most consistent player that i expect to see in this series is probably jimmy butler uh he'll probably average 30 points and close to a triple double in the entire series um so it's up to the boston celtics to 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 build walls just like they would against the Giannis, just like they would against uh kd and judging by the fact they've had success against those guys uh, i think they'll look at jimmy butler as um the weaker of the three that they've had to run into and i think that's a safe bet even though jimmy's an amazing player he's not he's not KD, and he's not he's not Giannis, but uh he is jimmy and if you don't respect him he will close you out and i'm actually expecting that to happen since i picked him up in the heat uh jimmy is going to play defense as well he's going to make things very difficult on those boston celtics and i think he's going to be very key as i've already said in stopping Jalen brown i don't know if they're going to put jason tatum on him i don't know but i'll tell you this Grant Williams is going to be on somebody on the Miami Heat side of things, and it'll probably be Jimmy Butler. So he's going to have to deal with the physicality of that young man. And, uh, you know, if he's attempting shots, look out. At the end of the day, uh, these are two of the best coaches available right now. And judging by what I've seen thus far, uh, they're both strategists. They both are thinkers. They're both looking to make life difficult on the other coach by using misdirection things. Uh, maybe they'll play a guy. Uh, a little less minutes today so they can catch you off guard with him tomorrow. That type of thing is to be expected in this series. Spolster is one of the best, and Yume Udoka is gifted. You're, you're clearly seeing he's special as it pertains to this coaching thing. Some people got it, some people don't. He definitely has it, naturally. So uh, I'm excited about his future, and he could be looking at an NBA championship this year. you know. But he has to get past the Miami Heat, and I think that's going to be a very tall task. The Miami Heat have nothing but players that know their system, that love being in that system that are top conditioned athletes because of the fact that they're in that Miami Heat system. And that's another thing that is underrated. And you look at the Miami Heat, they have a culture that we understand demands top fitness. I think it's why they are a good bet to be, to go this far in a year that they have good talent because they're gonna demand that the talent take care of themselves organizationally you better be in shape or your butt ain't getting on that floor. So I think that caters to them being their favorite anytime they're around. Uh, I like how they're handling Kyle Lowry. I think it's the right way to go. 
They tried him out there in the middle, middle of the series in the previous game. On the previous series, it didn't work. So, you know, rather than to send him out there hurt to, to, to Bricks and, and turn the ball over, uh, I think they got the right idea and are going to uh, sit him. So that's a good thing. At the end of the day, uh, I, I think this game right here is a trap game for both teams. It's a feel-out game more than anything, not a trap game. I got that wrong. It's a feel-out game. That's what I want to say. It's a feel-out game. Neither, neither team knows one another um, that well, and especially in the playoffs. They know each other as it pertains to the regular season, but it's a different story. And they're going to have to just figure out what matchups work for one another, get a taste for what kind of things are going to happen so that they can start strategizing. So whatever you see tonight is nothing in terms of what we're going to see overall. All it does is draw first blood for whoever gets it. Uh, Miami Heat has the home court, so I'm just going to automatically assume uh, that they'll take advantage of that home court, even though they do have some players out today. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say that they had the rest of the Heat have had is going to help them. So I got to run. Got to get out of here. Got something going on now. But I thank you guys for watching. Uh, Heat going to win tonight's game. BDL 44, thank you for watching.